Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode, we're going to be looking at a rehousing in the care for the little coddle Voggins or the Mexican Red Rump. Love these guys. I have to admit, I overlooked them for many, many years, but I've since raged three of them up. One was a mature male. One is my large female that I got as a larger size. This one I got as a sling, but unfortunately I purchased it as a sling of another species and was kind of surprised to find out it wasn't that species, but I'm not complaining. It's a beautiful spider. This one here is in an enclosure that it probably should have been rehoused out of a while back. And so we're catching up with this one now, getting her a nice big new enclosure. Now, T. Voggins is a new world species found in Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize. There's also a population of them in the citrus grove in Florida that were not native to Florida. Somebody probably released one that was gravid. And it's a large terrestrial species, but it'll also do some burrowing. Females reach around six inches. And temperament-wise, they are kind of skittish. They can kick hairs. Some folks have gotten threat postures. They also have excellent feeding responses, and I think that's where their kind of nasty reputation came from. But I can tell you they're not as bad as most people are saying. At least most of them are. Remember, temperament can vary from specimen to specimen. So enough of just me talking. Let's take a look at my T. Voggins or Mexican Red Rum. All right, we're about to rehouse my Tleetlo Coddle Voggins. I probably butchered that name, so my apologies if I did. The Mexican Red Rump, love the spider, also known as the most dangerous spider on the planet. Uh, that was a video a few years back that just kind of cracked me up. It was so moronic. And uh, oddly enough, I looked up online, I was looking up uh, World Spider Catalog, and I looked up T. Voggins, and somebody had a picture of one up with just the word evil over it. So apparently this has a reputation for being evil. I did not know spiders could do that. But anyway, I honestly think the reputation for these guys has been vastly over-exaggerated by people who just haven't spent enough time around spiders to recognize the difference between an evil spider and one that's just, I don't know, has a little more of a food response or a little more defensive, we'll say. So love these guys. This one here, I actually pick up, and I'll take the top off here so Billy can try to get some footage, but it is, they are more skittish, and I think that's where they kind of get the bad rep is they were originally under the genus Brachypelma. People honestly thought Brachypelma as synonymous with beginner species, so they expect like slow-growing, slow-moving spiders, and these guys can be a bit of a handful for people that aren't familiar or not used to working with more high-strung spiders. So I think that's where the reputation comes from compared to other brachies. Yes, they were a little more high-strung. Obviously, the genus changed to Tleetlocotl a couple years back, a few years back, and they, I think nowadays people are a little more wary of it, a little more aware. I think that's the important thing is being aware of what you're getting. So this one I got back in 2014. At that time, I thought I was raising up a Bialbiceps. I did a couple videos with the Bialbiceps. It turned out after I put on some size, people were nice enough to chime in and go, nope, that's not a Bialbiceps. That's actually a B. Voggins. Back in the day, it was B. Voggins. And then here's some footage of one of the rehouses. This was from August 2016. At that point, I put it from its sling enclosure, which was a 16-ounce deli cup, into one of those European-style takeout box enclosures. I picked up a bunch of those. They're pretty cool. I use them for a little while. I haven't been using them recently. I have a couple uh, scorpions in them. And if I were to do this nowadays, I would probably put the same spider into one of the M-designed, it's like bathroom pantry something type containers. I just tried to find them on Amazon. They don't seem to be selling them anymore, but they're about six and a half inches by 4.75 inches by about five inches tall or so. I like those for my you know juveniles. And then what we did is we put her into this one here. This enclosure is one of the Exoterra breeding box smalls. It's eight inches by eight inches or so by about, I think, six inches tall. I'd stop using these. I used to have a ton of them. I just gravitated away from them. They're not bad enclosures. They're just not what I use anymore. So if I were to do this today, what she would likely have found herself in was one of the M Design containers that are about 12 and three quarters inch by seven and a quarter inch by seven inches. I use those a lot. They have the hinge tops, crystal clear. I love them. So just showing how things have changed over the course of the last, what has it been, like five, six years, seven years or so. Now, what we are going to put her into is this here. I have a bunch of these. My buddy Charles showed me these a while back, and I use a lot of them. They're really, really nice. This is a Gary plastic, clear, rigid plastic box that you can turn into enclosures. So you have to drill the holes. I drill all the holes in it. I have the top. Most of mine have what you can do is buy acrylic hasps and hinges and some of the solvent, and you can easily put them on. I have ones in the background. Billy just wants to look right up there. There are some with the hinges right up in there. But what you do is you put the hinges on, you make a little top. This one here, unfortunately, I wanted to get her out, and I realized afterwards I hadn't put the hinges on this. So if you put something heavy on top, it holds it down. It's not ideal, but where this one's going, it'll be easy for me to put something on top of it. And they actually fit rather securely, pretty snugly, but a 
spider that realizes it could get out of here could push it up. And then inside we have, this is a mixture of cocoa fiber, peat, and bio dude. I'm running out of bio dude and I have a bunch of cocoa fiber and peat. So I just did kind of a mix up of it. We've got some sphagnum moss, some green sphagnum moss, some leaf litter. And then what I've been doing with a lot of my spiders is giving them a choice of cork bark hide so she can go in here she can go in there some of them i've noticed will go like depending if the sun comes into the room they'll start one and go to the other it's kind of neat so we are giving her a choice there she will get a water dish people have asked why i don't put the water dishes in ahead of time it's because i want more maneuverability when i'm trying to get the spider in here and sometimes the water dishes get knocked over and get in the way so what we're going to do now is try to get her from point a to point b hopefully she'll stay out so we can see her a little bit but again the 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 goal of this is to always get the spider in as calmly as possible. And if it means she bolts right into one of these little places here, that would be great. Now, one thing I'm hoping to see with her, and I will mention this, I got about four or five inches of substrate in here. I do want to see if she'll do some burrowing. I've been giving most of my quote unquote terrestrial species room to burrow lately. And I found that a lot of them, when given the room and given the space and given the dirt, will take you up on it and will burrow. So for example, I rehoused a G poker piece a little ways back and I kind of gave her some extra depth of substrate and she did a little burrowing. She's been hiding in a burrow. It's adorable. So I want to make sure that I'm giving everybody that choice when appropriate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this out of here. Oh, I got to watch out. She's so dangerous. Should I back up like 10 yeah, feet? Yeah, like 10 and zoom feet. In? I, this is, I feel bad because people are going to say I'm a terrible husband by putting you in danger. Oh my Lord. I'm just going to go ahead and get her right in there. There you go. Oh God, my hand is so scary. Can she eat through the plastic? I don't know. Probably. I didn't really watch the video. Honestly. I just, again, and not that I just try to make light of it because I spend so much time working with spiders and trying to show people that they're not, uh, the majority of people out there think they're loathsome and scary and frightening to begin with as a hobby. We shouldn't be perpetuating that image. And that's why it kind of drives me nuts a little bit, but Hey, anything for review. So what we're going to do. There she is. I don't know if you see her little red booty. They are, uh, I have to say uh, they're ones that I didn't spend pay a lot of attention to early on because they were kind of a dime a dozen. And once I got some, I have another big female who I absolutely adore. Again, not she's actually rather laid back. This one's obviously a little bit skittish. Well, not obviously. She's not doing it now. But I think a lot of people ignore them. And it's a shame because they really are beautiful spiders. Right after a molt, legs will be jet black. That booty is popping red. Just really, really nice looking spiders. But they're dangerous. They're somehow. dangerous, yeah. They're not. And I think the trick is, is like I say, in every single video, I'm sure there's people out there right now going, mine's crazy. And I don't discount that. But as we always say, temperament can vary. So somebody might have a really crazy one and other people might have a more laid back one. But I hate using the term dangerous. I hate using the term aggressive because I get to meet an aggressive spider. Usually when they're throwing a threat pose or something of that nature, that is an expression of them being uncomfortable or wary. Or they like to eat. And, and they like to eat. And that's the other yeah. thing. The uh, this response. feeding responses. I think uh, Canthus curia geniculata is one that got a reputation for being aggressive, and I just think they have amazing feeding responses. All right, so what we're going to do is. Boop. Aww. Aww. Now, for the record, I have to be 100% honest. I expected a little more of a rise out of her with this one because, again, it can't, she can't be a skittish spider, but there you go. I'm going to have the cover ready just in case we'll be able to get some shots. So what I can do is turn that around. Maybe we can get a better look at her. Don't walk out of it. We want to get images of you. All right. I'll just leave it like that for a minute. Just tell me if you need the top. So as far as growth rate, these guys are known to grow a little more quickly than the other Tlitlocotl or Brachypelma species. This one, I got around a half inch or so. Within a couple years, she was about two inches. So it's a pretty decent growth rate. Right now, she's probably around the four and a half, five inch mark. She was a lot bigger than I thought, which is why she really needed to get out of that enclosure. There's another one. I have a Grandma Stola Polka Peas, which I love. That's also in one of these. It'll, we'll be rehousing that one rather soon too. So good growth rate. And I think part of that's through the fact they eat like machines, great eaters. And again, like you mentioned earlier, the feeding responses are fantastic with these. The slings ate great. I didn't have to really do a lot of pre-killed with her when she was a sling. As slings, I fed them usually small red runner roaches, little red runner roach nymphs or small crickets. As they put on a little size, two inches or so, they'll take down small or medium crickets, small or medium roaches, mealworms. And then as an adult, she takes down a couple crickets, a pop, no problem whatsoever. That's awesome. She's exploring. Beautiful, beautiful spider. And being so calm. I love that. I really was expecting her to be a little more high strung. I honestly wanted people to see it. And again, 
is one of the questions that comes up a lot, are these guys beginner species? I think for the right beginner, they're in line with a C, Cayenneal pubicans, the GBB, as far as being a beginner species. A lot of people say GBBs are beginner species. A lot of people are freaked out by the fact that GBBs, oh, a little hair kick yeah. there. She doesn't kick, hasn't kicked a lot of hairs for me. Um, some people are spooked by the fact that GBBs can be a little bit more high strung, a little bit quicker. There she goes. Ooh. Okay, a little speed. <laughs> and I think a little burst like that for somebody who's expecting a slower spider could freak them out. GBBs tend to kick hairs a little more. These guys tend to do a little more. They'll do some hair kicking, but they'll also throw up the threat posture. So again, if you're aware of that, I think the, the pros, they're very hardy. They're faster growing than some of the other beginner species. They're readily available and inexpensive, and they're easy to keep cons they are faster and they're a little more skittish and some can be defensive we can't discount that dangerous <laughs> defensive absolutely they can be defensive and as far as temperatures are concerned this one i got at the old house way back in the day before we even heated that tarantula room so in the winter time she would have temperatures in the 60s at times in the summer times it was usually high 70s occasionally would hit 80 now that we're in the new house, winter temps are right around anywhere between 72 and 75 with sometimes dropping during the day. Oh, there she goes in her hide. I'll open this so you can see her. Oh, oh, oh. She picked the one I didn't think she'd pick. Oh, oh, no, you stay in there. Here, pull the hairs. And in the winter time, it's usually around the mid uh, 70s or so. And it'll sometimes drop. We'll sometimes get the low 60s. Every once in a while, it gets super cold outside. The heat can't keep up. And then in the summertime, it's usually at least high 70s, 80s to even 85 degrees, rather warm. And she's grown pretty well regardless. So I can't think of anything else. Beautiful spider. I'm glad we got to see her move a little bit more quickly so people can see what I'm talking about. Now, in the grand scheme of speed, that is not particularly fast. I have other spiders that will run laps around her. But for somebody, who, again, who's not used to a fasting, faster moving spider or somebody that's coming into the hobby without a lot of experience working with them, that can be kind of off-putting. So there we go. T. Voggins, Mexican red rump, not an evil spider, not a dangerous spider, beautiful spider, one that people should consider that are looking for easy to raise spiders. Beginners, again, just be aware of what I've said about the behavior and you should be just fine. So again, it kind of upsets me that they've developed such a bad reputation because they really are amazing spiders. And I think they fall in line with other species that are sometimes recommended to beginners like the, again, aforementioned GBB or even the Brachypoma baby that some people will recommend, but I found can be very, very skittish, kick hairs. It can be a bit of a handful for somebody who's never worked with tarantulas before. So just keep that in mind getting these guys. And then kind of a plea to everybody out there that's making tarantula videos. I've done this for a long time now. I've spent a lot of time trying to convince people that they're not the scary, loathsome creatures that most people believe them to be. So it kind of sucks when somebody goes out there and calls them evil or dangerous or whatnot. So let's kind of, as a hobby, coalesce and stop portraying these guys as nasty to get views or whatever it may be, because all it does is harm the hobby and confuse people even more. We love these animals. We want other people to share our love for these animals. We really need to tone down the hyperbole and the rhetoric and let people understand that, yes, they can be, they're wild animals. They can be a handful, but it's not because they're dangerous or nasty or evil or trying to hurt us if they're acting like that, it means they're technically speaking scared. And we could debate the tarantula emotions all day long, but a tarantula that's acting like that is insecure in its environment and is lashing out and trying to protect itself. So let's always keep that in mind. That will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. You can check out my other T. Voggins video up in here. I'm going to put one from my buddy, Tarantula Haven, up here. He just recently did one not that long ago. It's worth checking out. As always, you take the time to comment. I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get busy and tend to get a lot of comments. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.